everybody, and uh, thanks for joining us for Pirate's Path, Career Lessons Learned. I will be your host today. Uh, my name is Scott Francis. I'm the president of the ECU Alumni Association, and we're so glad you've joined us wherever and however you are with us today. Thanks for making us part of your day. I uh, hope everybody's staying safe and healthy and sane and warm and well. <laughs> Uh, Pirates Path uh, program is a series of conversations with cool pirates with cool jobs and interesting career stories and paths to where they are today. Part of the nature and joy that we derive from our alumni work is giving pirates out there the opportunity to reflect on their student days and their journey to where they are now. So while we're capturing that here, there's also the opportunity for recent grads and current students even to learn from these journeys uh, and these stories. Uh, the Pirates Path series seeks to bring you alumni with impressive backgrounds and experience, and I'm looking forward to sharing that all with you uh, here and uh, nationwide as we record this. Our hope is that some of these great stories will glean uh, some interesting strategies or tales to overcome adversity that you can apply to your journey as well. Today, we are happy to bring you Ms. Kate Teal, class of 2007. As we get started, uh, some quick ground rules and format info with you. I should say first that we're recording this session so that our friends who couldn't be here can access it later. So note that we will record both our screens and the chats. We've muted your lines as we meet Kate and for optimal viewing experience, you should select the speaker view option which can be found on the upper right hand corner of your screen. Uh, also, we ask that you keep those lines muted for the duration of the program. We'll get started uh, with some questions, but at any time you, you can ask your own question in the chat by clicking on the word bubble labeled chat in the user menu at the bottom of your screen. I thank you in advance for your patience and understanding as we navigate the ins and outs of the technologies. We're semi experts by now though, so, uh, but we appreciate, uh, appreciate your patience there. Uh, one more thing before we kick off, uh, there should be a poll appearing on your screen, uh, checking in to see if our attendees have updated their contact info with us. And if you are on our ECU Connect platform uh, and about any other interest events you might be interested in. So that poll is there and we'll give you a couple seconds to complete that and then we'll dive right in. Okay, now it is my pleasure to introduce uh, our guest on Pirate's Path today, a great pirate and local legend, Kate Teal. Kate Teal was born and raised in North Carolina after graduating from ECU with a Bachelor of Arts in Exercise and Sports Science and Communication minor. Communication minor. Uh, Kate went on to hold jobs in the private sector related to health and fitness. After working in this field for a couple of years, she transitioned to the city of Greenville where she became experienced in local government sector as well as volunteering within the city of Greenville's nonprofit committees. On March 21st of 2019, Kate began as president and CEO of the Greenville Pitt County Chamber of Conver Commerce, the only five-star accredited chamber in the state of North Carolina. Under her leadership, the chamber has grown to a record number of members, has experienced strong financial growth has become more active in governmental affairs and public policy work, and has been influential in the development of a public-private partnership for economic development countywide. In 2019, the Chamber, under her leadership, was awarded the Chamber of the Year for North and South Carolina, and in 2020, named a top three finalist for the National Chamber of the Year. Teal and her husband, Graham, have two daughters and are incredibly proud to call Greenville home. Kate, thank you for joining us today uh, for Pirates Path with ECU alumni. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me. Hello, everybody. I suppose, given everything that's going on, the first appropriate question is, how's it going? What's life like been like since the, on or around March 15th? Uh, where, have you, where have you been? How have you been getting along since then? It has been interesting to say the least as the uh, representative for our business community, the Chamber of Commerce works, um, no matter what year it is, what time and what challenges or um, a, a 
opportunities we have in front of us. We represent the business community. And as you can imagine, our business community, much like our community across the country and across our world has been turned upside down in a matter of short, nine short months. Sometimes they seem long months, um, but it has been an interesting uh, several months as we've navigated this alongside our businesses and those that we represent. Uh, so many questions, so much confusion. Uh, PPP came out, people were working from home, um, navigating different changes as they happened often and regular. And so any way that we were able to provide an ear to our members and to people in our community, um, information as people needed that to continue business operations in whatever state they could, uh, just being able to connect with our members and provide provide support. Um, obviously, much like the Alumni Association, the things that we do here at the Chamber revolve around putting people in a place together to, to connect with one another and to network. And when you're not able to connect people in places, you find alternative ways to do so. And uh, we took a moment of pause to say, oh my gosh, what in the world are we going to do now? Just like everybody else. And a remarkable team quickly was able to pull together and come up with a plan B, C, D, E, F, all the way, you, know, you name it. Um, so it's been a great opportunity, a great challenge, and I'm humbled by the opportunity to, to lead the organization. Awesome, awesome. And probably spend some time, I'm, I'm still spending Monday uh, mornings as a third grade English teacher. Uh, mm -hmm which is not my area of expertise. I, I may be the worst substitute teacher in the world. <laughs> yeah, no, I, um, I gave up on much uh, homework help, teaching help, anything virtual. Um, having a third grader and a kindergartner through all of this is uh, a challenge to say the least, much less a husband working from home also, and why not throw in a puppy in the mix of it all? So it, it, it's just 2020. <laughs> awesome. So we'll we'll get back to, to how you got here, but first let's want to explore your origin story. And so obviously you're here in Pitt County, Greenville, but let's talk about how you got here. Where would you typically call home? If somebody says, where are you from? What's your hometown? Where, what do you call home? Home is Statesville, North Carolina in the Western part of the state. Um, Wonder, I used to say we had wonderful barbecue until I came to Eastern North Carolina and hate Western North Carolina barbecue now. I don't even want to eat it. I hate it. This is home um, associated with barbecue and life now. So my parents are still there. My grandfather still lives there. Um, it was a, a wonderful community to grow up in and I like to go back and visit, but not a place that I was ready to, to land my roots and happy to, to stay here in Greenville. Okay. Excellent. So growing up there, um, I, I, where I grew up, I knew maybe a handful of kids who knew exactly what they wanted to do with their lives when they, when they grew up. Uh, I don't imagine you grew up running around telling the neighborhood third graders you wanted to lead a chamber of commerce. So do you remember what you wanted to be growing up? Yes, I wanted to be an orthodontist. Um, I had plans and goals to be an orthodontist and actually started my cur uh, my education path here at ECU to do so. Um, here I am. Uh, um, so I wanted to be an orthodontist. I thought it was the coolest thing ever to um, be able to, to see people with a happy, beautiful smile and turn something that, you know, some, so many people were often um, embarrassed of to something beautiful and, and proud of. And that first thing you see, when you see somebody, you always recognize their smile. Um, and that was something I thought would be a really cool job and a wonderful opportunity to, to change somebody's life in a simple way. And here I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, here you are. So you graduate uh, from is it Statesville High? Correct. Yes. Okay. How did you end up at ECU? What was like your first exposure to ECU? I ended up here, actually, uh, I was in high school, um, I was being recruited by multiple schools to swim in college. And about halfway through my senior year, I found this thing called life outside of athletics. And um, my mom was my swim coach from five all the way up to high school and went through the recruiting process with me. And as I looked at schools to swim, 
I threw in a few op options. Maybe I don't want to swim, but this would be a really cool school to go to. Uh, and so some of the schools I was only applying to for athletics. ECU, I put my name in there as potential athletics, but I really want to go to school there. And then um, once I found life outside of uh, aquatics, um, I really had an opportunity to say, I've done this for, for 13 years. Every weekend has been consumed with water and swim team, and it shaped my life in a way that I'm thankful for but I'm ready for something else. And so I put all the schools that I had applied to and been accepted into um, to the side and um, said either it's Wilmington or ECU. Wilmington had no football team. So here I come. <laughs> ECU. That, that is how I got here um, and never looked back ever since. It was a wonderful opportunity to, to completely change what I thought I wanted to do in a college program. Awesome, awesome. Uh, and so when you moved here, did you live on campus your freshman year? I did. Um, when I moved here in uh, 2003, most of the dorms did not have air conditioning. And I had lots of friends on campus that um, sweated it out. But I was fortunate enough to live in Umstead, which I actually don't even think it's a dorm. Maybe it's a dorm now. Umstead and Slay um, were the two dorms on 10th Street that um, it was a beautiful dorm, very small, only three stories. So I didn't have to climb a bunch of stairs or fight over an elevator. Uh, so I stayed in Umstead, right in the central part of campus. How I managed to get that, I do not know. But all of my friends came to our room because we had air conditioning and um, it was a, a wonderful place. I actually lived in that dorm for two years. Awesome. Awesome. My very first job out of grad school was a residence hall director in a non-air conditioned building in the middle of North Central Florida. And I, just, I couldn't even believe that that existed. Oh yeah. <laughs> Did you, I, I know a lot of my friends would put the ice buckets in front of the windows and put a fan to blow the cold air from the ice. <laughs> I learned all kinds of, if, if the person across the hall from you does the same thing, it helps yeah, yep. The whole air yeah, I, I learned a lot about science there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what got to campus, were you involved uh, in a bunch of things? What, did you have a job while, while in school? My first year, um, again, I started that path of um, science, hoping to be an orthodontist. And so I was really involved in class and studying and all things that your college student should do. Uh, I had several friends that were already here and then some from high school that came. Um, and I, I did not immediately jump right into being involved as much on campus as I was just adjusting to college life. Um, did lots and lots of studying. Don't ask my parents because they'll probably tell you I didn't, uh, but quickly realized that my career or my path in education down that road was maybe not what I need to do. Um, I did not work my freshman year, um, but I eventually joined into a sorority and with Kappa Delta my um, second year at ECU, but really had a lot of fun just getting to know Greenville, um, uh, working uh, with friends around uh, Greenville and throughout the community, just to really enjoy the campus life and uh, primarily what I came here for, my attempt at studying and school. And then um, when when things kind of went south in the science classes, where do I go from here? So didn't really get as involved on campus until my sophomore year. Right, right. Okay. So Saturday in the fall, uh, while you're in school, did you have a home football game routine or place that you typically go? What was kind of your game day experience like? Yep. So um, yes, I, uh, I should back up because if anybody remembers 2003 and 2004, my first two years here, football was absolutely terrible. Um, sorry to the John Thompson era of ECU football, but um, I tried it a few times my freshman year and then we ended up just tailgating and hanging out in friends' dorms, dorm rooms um, because it, we just could not bear <laughs> the football games. And um, then Skip Holtz came and football truly made ECU the experience that I had. Um, Skip turned the program around really quickly. We won games, we went to bowls. The atmosphere in Dowdy Ficklin was um, something that 
we all know is desirable and where we all wanted to be. Um, Saturdays, we tailgated as soon as that tailgate lot was open. You could find myself and my friends out there, uh, and we were bouncing back and forth from um, area to area, you know, who's got the most fun, who has the crowd, who's cooking the pig. Um, it, it was a wonderful opportunity just to really get involved and uh, have a really good time throughout all of it too. I'm fighting back tears because <laughs> I can't wait till we get back to, to being able to do that again. So, Amen. Um, yes, and that is, that is part of the that's like half the fun of college football is like the whole day. All of the great memories from college yeah. start with football games um, and the friends that you make and the connections. You know, you have hundreds of people that are standing around the, the football tailgate areas throughout the entire city. Um, and at the time, I didn't realize this is such a family environment. You know, it was more of the college tailgating um, before, right across the street from McAllister's where the current athletic complex is was our tailgate area and it was nothing but a big grassy lot with thousands of people in that area so a lot has changed um, in a short amount of time but it was I mean a sea of people and you could walk around and um, literally see thousands of people and uh, we had a great time yeah yeah and now now that I've grown up quite a bit, uh, and especially this year, see the impact of all of that on a college town uh, and the, the bigger picture of a college town and its, its economy. Yes. Um, so embarking on the journey to adulthood is not easy and it doesn't always just kind of happen. So uh, do you remember uh, who were kind of some of the influential people in your student experience? And that could be another student, an administrator, uh, anybody out there. Um, I really don't know who the people were, but I, I was struggling, as I mentioned, with the what I thought I wanted to do uh, with my career future and my degree at ECU. And I remember being in um, in the basketball arena for uh, a class that I had coming up and they had just put us in there. Hold on. We'll be right back with you. And down on the basketball floor, there was um, one of the health science classes and they were working with one of the elementary schools in town um, and had the students out on the basketball floor teaching them how to do push-ups and jumping jacks. So I have no idea who the people were and what class it was, but I remember that aha moment of saying whatever they're doing right there, I want to find out what class that is because I think that's the path that I should go down um, for my career and my education. And I need to go find my advisor and ask them what's happening in the basketball arena right now. Um, what class is that? And how can I change to make whatever they're doing where I want to go? Um, so I don't know who they were. Uh, that, that was just that moment for me that shifted and shaped um, my my path at an er, thankfully early enough level to where I could finish out my sophomore year and not waste, you know, two years of college not knowing what I want to do. So I'm thankful to whatever class that was, um, mm -hmm. that was in their teaching. I'm sure it was a, a PE or or some type of class working with the local students. But just to see them changing the lives and teaching these kids um, how to do the fundamental exercise and make their life healthy and fun. Um, you know, that's a really cool job. And uh, it, yeah, I'll never forget that day just sitting there thinking, all right, I'm, I'm in the wrong thing now. That's going to be right for me. Yeah. Yeah. And kudos to you for going to an advisor and, and bringing that to them rather than trying to figure it out on your own. And I think Stevens is uh, advisors know everything. They they do. It sure, sure feels like they do. They certainly know more than 19-year-old me do. Hey, amen. That's why I went to them. <laughs> yes. So spring break of your senior year, people are starting to ask, so what are you doing next year? Do you have an answer at that point or a game plan? Did, did that question make you sweat or did it make you smile? I did have a game plan. Um, I actually... So I'll back up. I transitioned my major um, away from pre-med with a look to go to in, into dentistry, finally orthodontics, to exercise and sports science. At that time, I thought, um, you know, personal training or um, physical therapy, occupational therapy, that was where I was headed and got a um, 
started looking at jobs early on, wanted to make sure before I left ECU, I had a job and wasn't just searching for something when I graduated. And um, spring break, I actually stayed here and worked. I had a job at Best Buy my last two years of college, which was like the most amazing job as a college student you can ever have. Um, so I stayed here to work and looking for jobs. Uh, I didn't want to stay in Greenville, so I'll come back around to that point later, I'm sure. Classic ECU student at the time, that there's nothing for me to do here. There's no jobs for me here. How can I get out of here quickly? And um, I don't know if any of you remember the show on Bravo Workout. Um, it was obviously the early 2000s, but it was um, the ultimate dream job where you make this great salary, you train people, uh, you get a company car, and like that's not heard of in the fitness industry, right? You're working for commission, you work all hours of the day, it's just unheard of. But I found a company that was like workout, and it was that dream job down in Jacksonville, Florida. Um, so I had my, after spring break, I had already been um, interviewing down there. I had traveled and, and been accepted to, to move down to Jacksonville, Florida and start working for this company. So I knew what I was doing. I just had to get all my ducks in a row and finish school. Okay. So that uh, actually, I was going to use the word matriculate for no reason there. <laughs> did that, that job actually come through? You moved down to Jacksonville after graduation? I did. I um, graduated in May and I started, um, oh my gosh, July 4th weekend in Jacksonville. So moved down. It was hot. I knew absolutely nobody there. Um, my mom and I packed a truck and we went and um, looked for apartments in Jacksonville. I had no idea where we were going to go. Um, and my dad followed the next weekend with more of our stuff, found the apartment, started working um, July 4th. And it was absolutely terrible. Um, that dream job that you think you've landed, that's going to be the answer to all of your prayers. And it's this amazing company. They cover your car and a, a decent salary. And how did I just get so lucky to graduate college and, and land this job? Um, it's when they say it's too good to be true. It literally is too good to be true. I met some really good people when I say some like a handful of good people that um, I was lucky enough to work alongside and training people down there, you know, it was what exactly what I went to school for changing their lives helping them lose weight get in shape be their ultimate version of themselves. Uh, and then started to learn more about the company in which I went to work for, read into a little bit of the um, behind the scenes conversations. And I called my parents and I said, I can't do this. They're like, excuse me, you just moved down there. You have a one year at least on your apartment. Yes, you can. Like you can do anything for a year. I'm like, no, you don't understand. I really can't. Um, and October, I finally convinced my parents that no, I can't do this. So July, August, September, four months, they finally listened to me. And in November, the company filed for bankruptcy. Uh, and so I got out just in time. Um, my dad told me, you have one month to live in our house before I kick you out. And my dad knew that's exactly what it takes for me to hear, you know, here's, here's the ultimatum. If you don't make it, you're out of here. And he knew it took that for me to figure out what I needed. So I came back to Greenville, a few reasons why. One, Jacksonville was expensive. And when I went out, drinks were expensive, food was expensive, apartments were expensive. I knew I didn't wanna be in Statesville and hanging out with my parents all the time, nor did I wanna land a career there. And so what did I know but Greenville and its people and opportunities were here. And I called one of my friends and I said, can I stay on your couch for a while? Um, so I did. And she finally said, you know what, just take my bedroom. I'll go and um, stay at my boyfriend's house. And I went over to Fit for Life 24 every day until the owner of the gym hired me for a job. <laughs> and here I am. <laughs> that's what brought me back to Greenville so <laughs> you're forced back yes I, oh, went I back to what I knew yes yes I, I just had visions of Firefest as you were explaining the, the place you were working in Jacksonville 
it's not what you signed up for. No. Um, so you came back and you were working at what, Fit for Life? Fit for Life 24, yes. Life 24, there, okay. Several how, years. How long did you stay with them? I was with them three years. Three years as a trainer? I started as a personal trainer and then moved into training and group fitness classes, working the front desk, um, and then eventually took over a lot of the front desk responsibilities and continued training um, until I got to the point of, I am so tired of working around everybody else's schedule and I'm in the gym at 4.30 in the morning, leaving around 11 um, and then, you know, people work during the day. And so there was nothing for me to do from 11 until about four when people start to get off work. And I worked from about four until eight. And um, I had the opportunity to meet this really good looking guy in the gym. And I strategically positioned my clients to where I could go and train my clients where he was working out and uh, finagled my way into a relationship with my now husband. And so we met at the gym and then realized this is no kind of life to have as I'm looking to get married and have a family and working all hours of the day. And um, so anyway, I was there and moved over to a, um, a chiropractor's office doing patient care and rehab for two years uh, and moved over to some office management work in, in their office and kind of enjoyed the, the business side of the office while still being able to, to help people along their fitness and health journeys. Um, and then again, realized as we started to talk about having a family, the office doesn't close until six o'clock at night. Um, you know, how in the world am I ever going to have kids and not get home until 637 at night? I, that's not the kind of mother I wanted to be. And so started looking for other opportunities and found a position um, with the city of Greenville in their financial services office um, that then correlated to the business opportunity that I had been given at the chiropractor's office. And I worked at the city for five years. Excellent. Excellent. So kind of stayed, stayed with your, I'll call it kind of some of your core values and helping people. And he, I guess it even goes back to the orthodontal core values of making people smile and feel better. Uh, yep. feeling healthy and so kind of kept that trajectory uh, and then how did the transition into kind of your current world become about? When I was with the city um, I'm not a cubicle desk kind of person to work from eight to five that's just not me but that was the job that I had and so they asked if I would like to help out on their United Way committee um, and so I took that opportunity to give back into the community and get me more involved in something outside of just my desk job at the city uh, and really fell in love with the nonprofit world. We were working on sponsorships and fundraisers and out in the community, talking to people, finding creative ways to um, raise money to then give back into the United Way, which is a part of our community. Um, I was on that committee all five years that I was at the city and finally chaired it my final year at the city. And, um, again, I fell in love with that side of work uh, and, and not as much as the work that I was doing as my paid job, as much as I did the volunteer role. And just so happened that a, a job opportunity posted at the chamber. And I said, you know what, this lines up perfectly with what I've done through the United Way committee, but still, it, you know, city and chamber, the relationships that are there, um, everything just kind of bridges well together. So I put my name in for application and consideration and um, was quickly called back and offered the job in 2000, the December of 2015, when I started January of 2016. Um, so again, just that connection between doing something outside of the job, you never know where that will land you for a position in the future. Yeah. Yeah, and so started there in 2016 and then in 2019 moved into kind of the, the leadership role here. Um, those three years, was, there, was that the plan? Was there a, kind of a, a path that you followed or a kind of a professional development plan that you followed to, to do that? Or was it just, as I used to tell uh, my students, just working hard and so those things will happen if you 
sure. focus on yeah. what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> so I started in January um, and had an amazing boss who is luckily still in our community, Scott Senator, who's over at the Vinet Health Foundation now. And um, he was a great leader here at the chamber and had been at the chamber for many years. And again, started with him in January. And then in April, he announced to our staff that he had been offered a position with Vinet Health Foundation and just crushed the team at the time. I'm, I'm thinking, I just started here and you're leaving. Like, what in the world? Um, and so I had quickly fallen in love with the, the work that the chamber does on behalf of the business community and said, I'd love an opportunity at this job in the long term. However, I just started here and have so much more to learn. If this was a year or two from now, my application would have been the first one on their desk for the position, but the timing just wasn't right. Um, and so after a, a search, they decided um, to bring in an interim president and Leo Corbin, who had actually been a chairman here at the chamber, accepted the interim role when Scott had left. And, and then upon further discussion, they had decided to put Leo in the full-time position to either work with current staff to see who might have an interest um, if the opportunity was there to in the long term when Leo was ready to again retire for the, the next time, if the opportunity was there for a current staff member or at that point if they would look for um, hiring outside of the organization. So I, I worked and, and really got an opportunity to dig in deep to the nuts and bolts of the chamber and learn the back end of the organization. And I'm thankful that continued growth and, and leadership through Leo's guidance um, helped to shape me in a way that I knew this is exactly where I wanted to be. Excellent. Excellent. And that, that's so important is learning the back end of, of the business, whatever the business may be, the, the pieces you don't see because it's, uh, you know, oh, I could do this job, whatever the job may be, I could do that person's job. And then someone hands you, I don't know, the 77 page uh, draft of your alumni magazine and says, here, edit this. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> that did not happen to me. I'm just saying, <laughs> um, but the back end of the, the things that you just don't see uh, that make the engine run that uh, the public sees smooth operation has a great time at an event. And then all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes is, is bananas. Yes. Um, and the, the team that kind of makes it happen because they, all the ducks are lined up and, and they've got the okay. leadership pointing them in the right direction. So um, any advice you would give to others as they are pursuing their career and kind of moving forward, uh, whether they're looking to pivot or whether they're looking to stay on the course that they're on? Um, for me, the biggest thing is don't think that what you thought you wanted to do is what you will always end up doing. And don't be afraid to realize you're unhappy in that path or you need a challenge for something different or that you told your parents this is what you were going to do and you're going to finish and stick to it. Um, again, I, I told my parents my parents told me I could do anything for a year and persistence. No, I can't. No, uh, no, trust me on this one. Um, so trust your gut and always think about, you know, you know the most about yourself, not what others know about you or what others think about you. And if you're not happy in that place that you're in, figure out, it took me being in that, the gym and saying, oh, this is exactly what I want to do. So just be aware of your surroundings and know that, you never know when the opportunity will present itself um, for you to do something other than what you thought you might do. Yeah, yeah, and pay, paying attention, like you noticing so quickly that, oh, this isn't, this isn't gonna work. Yes. <laughs> Being yeah. able to notice that so quickly and kind of read, reading between the lines, as you said, to, to figure that out. Um, were there any parts thus far that were harder than you expected? Uh, I guess there's the obvious, the obvious one that's come up lately, but <laughs> any parts of the journey that were harder than you thought they'd be? The journey of life or the journey of career? They go hand in hand, I guess. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, oh my gosh. Well, the journey of life, parenting, you know, you, you, it seems like this 
thing that's just going to come naturally to some and oh, I'm going to love my kids and they're going to be so sweet and they're not. Um, they are sometimes and then sometimes it's like it's really hard just to keep your composure and relationships in general, you know, it's, it's not easy to, um, to be married all the time. And you have to really work on any relationship that you're in and figure out how um, a husband and a wife works together and a mom and a dad works together and a team and a leader work together and the community, you know, we're not always all going to agree on everything and how you have those hard conversations and move forward when it's over, knowing that you said, um, your side and they said their side and now how can we come together to agree on what's best for all of us yeah yeah and that, it's, hard. it's really hard I'm inspired uh Mary and Megan we probably need to just have another series that's like six-part series about parenting stuff because <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's yeah it's it's a bear <laughs> it's a bear and uh i I've found during, especially while we've kind of been together so much, I know years from now, my kids will probably say, those were my favorite times because you were always around. And I'll be like, oh, were they? <laughs> yes, you were always around. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, like the patience and, and finding that my fuse is a little shorter than I thought it was. And, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, with the caveat that my kids are really good and like respectful of the office space and out oh, when daddy's on a call, we stay away. Oh, um, or not, so I, so you're lucky there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I've been, been very lucky uh, to, to have that. But yeah, uh, I found watching sports with my kids now has become really difficult if it's a game that I like really care about. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I've got a little girl who likes to sing just all the time for no reason. <laughs> I'm like, you have to leave. <laughs> you have to leave. Uh, we found during one game that ECU's offense was moving the ball way better when my son was out of the room. And I'm a superstitious person. And so my man had to had to be in another room when we had the ball. <laughs> uh, luckily, he, he bought into it. He came, he would come when we were on defense and yell out plays and we, we had fun with it but uh yeah there's there's challenges left and right uh just waiting for you that's right you never know yeah yes thank thank god my wife was <laughs> she was like are you really gonna send him to another room <laughs> <laughs> um what do you wish you knew when you were starting out in this career path or you know it, it was better to not know and kind of learn it as we were doing it um i wish i knew uh, how to be a little bit more adaptive. Um, you know, you, you try and you try and you try and, and then you have to make a change and adapt. And sometimes that's really hard. Uh, and so adapting sometimes when it's hard, um, you know, you got to go with the flow, but part of nature says, wait a second, the, you don't always go with the flow. Sometimes you need to create something different. Um, and so just being able to adapt to whatever scenario you're in, um, that's hard to learn. And had I learned that a little bit earlier, maybe things would have been differently, done differently. Um, but as you get older, I think just knowing you've got to adapt and go. Um, don't second guess any of your decisions maybe uh, for a second you can second guess it just to make sure that's right but for me i'm a okay this is what we've got now let's figure it out and go um just adapt and don't always second guess because otherwise you're going to be sitting there waiting and keep thinking and not planning to move forward excellent excellent uh and so we're uh, we're coming to the close of our time here uh again if anybody has any questions for kate go ahead and throw them in the in the chat uh, and we'll hit you with uh, some of the rapid fire questions before we get you out of here, if that works okay. Sure. Your favorite, oh, this is good because you're still here. Favorite things to do or places to go while at ECU? This is Augie, you probably can't answer this. <laughs> while at ECU? What? Yes, while in school. Oh my goodness. All right. Um, 519 was my very favorite place to go. <laughs> uh, you could find me there most nights. Um, a few of the other favorite places aren't here anymore, but um, the other place I'm telling you like all about 
my my after class hours and what I liked to do. Um, Best Buy, I mean, again, I loved working there. We had a great time. Uh, college then was a lot different than it is now. So I'm pointing out bars because there weren't like that, the local hangout spot or the coffee shop or a restaurant that you really liked. Um, the late night pizza spot was always fun. The football games, I mean, anything that was just a university experience or time with girls in the sorority, um, it was, a, I lived a very social life while I was in college and anything um, related to school, I was at the rec center often. I think I had to take like 20 PE classes to graduate. And so I was um, there a lot. And if I wasn't there, it was usually somewhere downtown after about 930 at night. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And it, I, no judgment here as it's funny, probably as you get older, uh, it's, it's more about just the place to gather and it, it didn't matter what you were doing per se, it was who you were with that was, that right. was most important. Yep. Um, can you share with us favorite quote, something you might find inspiring? Mm, um, one that I typically always come back to in my head, um, if you want to go fast, go alone. And if you want to go far, go together. Um, you can do anything by yourself and you can get there as quickly as you want to. Doing it alone is not always the answer, but if you want to go farther, you need to do it together and with others. And I think that's true in our own community. You know, you've got to collaborate and work through partnerships to really advance anything beyond just what one person can do. Excellent. Excellent. How about a favorite book? Um, Scott Senator, actually, again, when he left here, he gave us all a copy of a book called The Energy Bus. And um, from a, a leadership and just team perspective, that has always stuck out as a favorite book of mine. It's, it's not just a read on the beach kind of book, but one that you really think about and um, who's the right, do you have the right people on the bus to drive your life and your organization forward? And if not, then open that door and it's time for them to come off the bus. Um, so if you haven't read it, it's a great one. Um, I still have a copy of it and I've read it, I think probably three times. Um, but if you haven't read it, I suggest reading it. It's a quick read, won't take you long at all, but a great book. Excellent. And how about a favorite tool that you've been using? This can be an app, a kitchen tool, a garden tool, any anything mm -hmm. like that. I do not, I'm not a app junkie or a phone. I mean, I'll like mindlessly scroll through Facebook or Instagram. The tool, oh, this is bad, like my wine bottle opener. <laughs> <laughs> that is my go-to tool. I don't build things. I don't put things together. I'm not a big cook, but if there's one thing that I always grab, it's a tool to open my bottle of wine after work. <laughs> <Excellent>. <laughs> And oh, I'm I'm excited to hear this one because you, you've mentioned a couple of times waking up at 4.30. Do you have a favorite habit that you, habit or routine that you have? Um, yes, I love going to Orange Theory, um, sometimes the gym. That's my favorite routine when life is hard, when the kids are hard, when work is hard or when it's all good. Um, just going in there for an hour, they turn on music that takes me back to 519 or takes me back to the other place. And it's that um, I'm a little bit too old to, to do this anymore. So it's going to couple the music with the exercise and I'm going to walk out of here every time I go feeling really good. So um, of all habits, I think that's probably the best one that I could could pick. It's an um, outlet for me just to keep going and, and have the energy to finish out a day. And fine, do you have a final word or challenge to pirates out there? I think um, once you become a pirate, it, it's the saying, once a pirate, always a pirate. And that's true. It doesn't matter where you go. Um, the, the kids that I see around this community grow up knowing pirates. Um, I didn't grow up here, so I don't know. I didn't know pirates until I moved here, but I can't imagine um, not having a wardrobe full of purple. Uh, not automatically when you hear the word purple screaming back gold and knowing that when you go somewhere, uh, when you say East Carolina, there's somebody that's going to recognize or, oh, I went to ECU or I know Bees Barbecue. Um, so just embrace the ECU. I was actually in Raleigh probably a year and a half ago, eating um, out with my husband and 
the waitress had asked us where we're from. And we said, Greenville, all right, we're in Raleigh, only an hour away from here. And she's like, oh, Greenville, South Carolina. And I said, no, Greenville, North Carolina. She's like, oh, I went to ECU. Come on, do not let the, if you're a pirate, like embrace it and say Greenville, North Carolina, do not automatically assume just when somebody says Greenville, they mean the one below us. Uh, so always be proud of Greenville. Um, it's a place that embraces the college students and come back it right now it's hard to come back to football games and uh the tailgates and the homecoming parade but come back it's every time you come it's changed it's going to change um, but that culture is always there absolutely yeah it's, i've talked to alumni that have haven't been back in 20 years and came back and was just like oh my gosh i don't recognize it and folks who graduated maybe two or three years ago come back and say, oh my gosh, I don't recognize it. Life yeah. comes at you fast and there's so much changing all the time. It's, uh, it's a good, that's a good habit to get into is coming back. Amen. So we're gonna close. We are uh, running out of time here, but uh, thank you all for checking in. If you would like to learn more about the Chamber of Commerce, we are placing those links in the chat for your reference. Uh, we hope you'll continue to be engaged with us both uh, in this time of, of COVID-19 and well afterwards. And like we said, come back uh, to learn more about the Alumni Association and what we do. Go to piratealumni.com. We have a ton of virtual resources there for you for now. Uh, so please visit and take a look at those and, and other in items of interest. Uh, our association uh, functions based on gifts from our donors. So if you are inclined to do so, please consider a gift to the Alumni Association commensurate with your ability to give and your passion. They are very uh, much appreciated. Keep an eye out on our social media in the new year as we unveil uh, new virtual offerings and engagement opportunities with the Alumni Association and with ECU. Thank you all for joining us and thank you, Kate, for your time and sharing your pirate story with us. Uh, I look forward to seeing and hearing about the continued fantastic things that, uh, that you're doing in the community. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for all your hard work. Yes, thank you. And until next time, Pirates, thanks for joining and we will talk soon.